at this time. All kids interested in forming the tunnel as the team enters the court, please come to the Red Hawks bench. Again, all kids interested in forming the high five tunnel for the team, please come now to the Red Hawks bench. Southeast Athletics would like to thank all of the Red Hawks club members for their support of the CMO Athletics. Please turn your attention to the video board for a special recognition of Red Hawks members at the MVP champion and legend levels. Any individual or business can join the Red Hawks club with a donation of $50 or more to support CMO Athletics. Your donation provides scholarship funds for Southeast student athletes, plus you'll receive a great number of exciting benefits. Visit GoSoutheast.com slash donate to make a donation and join today. We don't see problems, we see opportunities for creative solutions. At Southeast Missouri State, we don't think outside the box, we got rid of the box. We embrace innovation and turn ideas into successful businesses by learning from those who've been there before. We even offer a safe space to try out ideas before launching. Who else can say that? Entrepreneurship is everywhere. Let's make your ideas happen.
At Southeast Missouri State, we know agriculture can mean so much more than working on the farm. It means research and lab work that lead to profitability and sustainability. It means creating new jobs, jobs that other people haven't even thought of yet. It means the spirit of entrepreneurship and the desire to make your own way. You want to do something groundbreaking. Hello everyone and welcome to the Show Me Center at Southeast Missouri State University where the SEMO Red Hawks are set to take on the Bears of Central Arkansas next on the OVC Digital Network. Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mormon. I'm going to be with you tonight for both the pregame as well as the halftime show tonight between the Red Hawks and the Bears. So far this season, SEMO is 3-3 three three, while Central Arkansas is 1-5. Central Arkansas has only played one home game so far this season, so we'll see how they fare tonight once again on the road. In their last game, SEMO fell to UMKC 86 to 75, while Central Arkansas also suffered a loss against Little Rock 89 to 87. One of the big keys for tonight's game will be the three-point shooting, as Central Arkansas shoots over 40 percent, and SEMO allows over 44 percent shooting from the feet from the three-point arc. One of those guys who's going to be defending that arc will be senior guard Antonius Cleveland. Cleveland is a senior guard this season. He's averaging 16.5 points per game against UMKC in SEMO's last game. He scored 16 points, had five rebounds, three blocks, and two steals. So he was very effective on defense. One of those guys he's going to be defending against will be senior guard Derek Brooks. He was last season's newcomer of the year in the Southland Conference. He averages 17.2 points per game while shooting over 52% from three-point land. Last game he scored 17 points while knocking down three threes and grabbing seven rebounds along with four blocks. So we'll see what he can do tonight, but for now, Let's take a quick look at the upcoming game for SEMO. On Sunday, SEMO will be taking on Indiana on the road, followed up by two games at home against Missouri State and then Northern Kentucky. Speaking of Indiana, let's take a look at the AP Top 25, where they fell 10 spots all the way from 3 to 13 after a 71 to 68 loss to Fort Wayne. Baylor, on the other hand, jumped up 11 spots from 20 to 9 after defeating VCU, Michigan State, Louisville and Sam Houston State. They're now 6-0. But that's what's going on around the country. Now, let's hand it over to Eric Sean, who's got the call for tonight's game. Closeouts, we're not doing a good job of containing people off the bounce. And so when you don't contain people off the bounce, it creates a help situation. And when that guy comes and helps, it creates an opportunity for that guy to get a three-point shot. So I think our individual defense on closeouts is our, our biggest uh, problem. And so if we can get to the point where we're guarding our yard better, and then we got to do a better job of contesting that three-point shot. Just because, like, you got there and the guy makes it, then obviously it wasn't good enough. Um, so we've, we've done some things here these past couple of days. You didn't have a lot of time. Um, but if you sit there and you watch the tape against UMKC, you got to make some changes in what you're doing. You can't keep giving up this high percentage on the three-point line. As far as injuries, Coach, wish we didn't have to talk about them, but uh, Dondre Duffus out again tonight. Uh, what's the latest on him? And then Jonathan Dalton suffered a concussion. Your backup point guard unavailable tonight. Yeah, we're going to be really shorthanded on the perimeter because we don't have Dondre or Jonathan available for us today. So 
Um, it's going to put some pressure on some of these guys to play more minutes than they normally play. And then for guys like Taj, he, he's got to come in and be our backup point guard. So, you know, that's a lot of responsibility for him. But it's unfortunate. Jonathan is going through concussion protocol and just is not ready to play and might be doubtful for Sunday as well, too. And then Dondre, we just can't get a determination of exactly what's wrong with him in order to treat it. So first you got to find the problem and then you can treat it. And it's a growing injury? Yeah, he's, it's a reoccurrence of the same thing he had earlier. But now we need to figure out, is it the same exact injury? Um, do we need to do something as far as surgically to repair it? Is it just rest? Um, so we've got to figure out what's the best course of action for him. Growing. That's head coach Rick Ray. And we appreciate his time before today's game. Uh, apologize about our technical issues. They Try to get some things squared away back at the studios, and we are ready to go. It is time now for your Red Hawks starting lineups, and they are presented by Arrangements by Joyce in Cape Girardeau. The difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little bit extra, and you find that little bit extra at Arrangements by Joyce. You can call them at 335-3238, 335-3238, or check out their terrific flower arrangements just log on to their website, arrbyjoyce.com. That is arrbyjoyce.com. Your Red Hawks starting lineup running the point is senior Jamal Calvin. The shooting guard tonight will be Jalen Benton. Antonius Cleveland, first team all Ohio Valley Conference, will play at the three spot, playing the four. Denzel Mahoney, the freshman, coming off a career-high 20 points Monday at Kansas City. And up front, in the middle, Trey Kellum, the senior from Peoria, Illinois. For the UCA Bears, they will go with Matthew Camba along with Jordan Howard. Their leading scorer is Derek Brooks. Up front, Thatch, Unruh, and Albert Christensen. He's the man in the middle at six feet, nine inches tall, out of Lund, Sweden. And we are almost ready to go. Bears are all in black tonight with the purple letters and numbers trimmed in white, I'm Eric Sean, joined by the Missouri Sports Hall of Famer, Jess Boland, and our OVC Digital Network webcast crew tonight. Six foot nine inch Albert Christensen against six foot six inch Antonius Cleveland, and the Bears will control the tip. Jordan Howard will run the point. All Southland Conference selection. He's ninth in the league in scoring already over a thousand points. Derek Brooks is their star. He had it for a moment, now right back to Howard. Swings it right, a dribble drive by Camba. Hands it right back to Derek Brooks. Remember, this team leads the Southland Conference in three-point shooting percentage. That's been an Achilles for the Red Hawks defending the three, and they bank in a three from the right wing. Is that a sign of things to come, Jess? They're banking in 20-footers. Yeah, that was a deep one, wasn't it? And no room for air. Man, there's a line drive shot off the board. Matthew Camba knocking that one down. Comes in 24th in the Southland in scoring at 12 points per game. Red Hawks on the first offensive possession. Shot clock already down to six. A three by Antonius Cleveland. No good. He doesn't get the bank shot. And the rebound to Christensen. Here come the Central Arkansas Bears who played a brutal schedule. Every game, their first five games all on the road, including games at Wisconsin and Oklahoma State. And a pull-up jumper goes down for Matthew Camba. Five nothing in four four. Hard. Uh, jo Jordan Howard hit the basket. Nice pass there from Camba. Number one. Broke for the basket. And stopped. Yeah, it was a nice pass. Jalen Benton tees up a three and won't go. And the ball is off the leg of Jamal Calvin. Not the start the Red Hawks wanted. Ball just off of their leg. Two three-point shots that did not go. Two shots for Central Arkansas that did go, including a banked-in three-pointer from Matthew Camba. You know, they have some overall size, don't they, this Central Arkansas team? And, and then a couple of outstanding young guards. Well, one's a senior, I think, but not little guys, but they are very good. And one of them's got the ball, Jordan Howard. He is from Chandler, Arizona, Perry High School. And already over a thousand points as a junior, a jumper in the lane that goes for Derek Brooks. Six six. He is there, Antonius Cleveland. Long, tough matchup. And the Red Hawks are down seven nothing before you can really get your hand into your popcorn here at the Show Me Center. Seven nothing. 
Central Arkansas. Denzel Mahoney steps to 16, pulls up with a jumper, missed it, and the Bears have it. And they are out on the run. Matthew Camba to the free throw line. Hands it right back for Jordan Howard. Nearly lost the ball, picked up. And Brooks is open for a three-pointer, and it's 10 to nothing. Central Arkansas. And the Red Hawks, who are dead last in the OVC in field goal percent defense, have not played any defense yet. Ball tipped into the backcourt, ran down by Jalen oh. Benson, and that's a turnover. Oh, that's a tough one. It was knocked out of his hand, and though, by a defender. Rick Ray is going to try to find somebody who can play defense. He's going to go with four new players. I don't blame him, do you? I mean, you got to try to keep from falling so far in the pit, it's impossible to get out. And 10 to nothing start, I would change around a few things myself. 10 nothing. And holding out front, Thatch Unruh. Gives it up to Camba. Now, one more time for Jordan Howard, who is second on their all-time three-pointers made list in the history of their program. And we get a personal foul immediately upon uh, Rick Ray bringing in uh, four new players. And they are Daniel Simmons, William Chenga, Milos Voranish, and Taj Edi. The only remaining starter that stays out there is their all-conference senior. Antonius Cleveland pass all the way into the backcourt for Jordan Howard. He just scored 19 points, handed out five assists in their overtime loss to Little Rock. Derek Brooks throws up an air ball. The senior all the way from Portland, Oregon is where he resides from. A year ago, Brooks was the Southland Conference newcomer of the year for the Bears. Tajini one hands it. Milos Vranish thought about a three. Passed it up. Daniel Simmons left corner. To the top it goes for Tajini. Shot clock at 12. Antonius Cleveland to the right baseline, shut off, works it out to the perimeter. A three by Daniel Simmons, contested and off the mark. That's something the Red Hawks are not doing, contesting three-pointers. Here comes Camba into the lane, runs up the shot with a right hand, and it spins out. Rebounded by William Chenga, who is at Southeast all the way from Cameroon over in Africa. Antonius Cleveland. Works it right for Daniel Simmons. A kick out, a deep three for Edie. He can shoot, and he buries it. And the Red Hawks are finally on the board after trailing 10-0 and missing their first four shots of the night. Taj Edie, who is arguably the best shooter with the best range on the team, hits it. And a missed jumper by Jordan Howard. Tried the three. He comes in 175 career threes. He needs 31 to get to Marcus Pillows, who leads the all-time record books. 206 for Marcus Pillow at Central Arkansas. He graduated in 2009. Tajidi called for traveling. So Jordan Howard will fly by the all-time three-pointers made record at Central Arkansas of Marcus Pillow. He's only a junior. And we're going to get a media timeout. Great start for the Bears. They have jumped all over the Red Hawks here at the Show Me Center. It is a 10 to 3 start for Central Arkansas, who is used to playing on the road. This is their sixth road game in seven contests so far this season. Let's take a. Well, at Southeast Missouri State, we know agriculture can mean so much more than working on the farm. It means research and lab work that lead to profitability and sustainability. It means creating new jobs, jobs that other people haven't even thought of yet. It means the spirit of entrepreneurship and the desire to make your own way. You want to do something groundbreaking beyond plowing fields. So let's get started. At Southeast Missouri State, two for three from the three and boy I, I, I've always talking about this but it's so important to get off to a good start I don't care what sport it is and it seems that teams come in here Eric and really hit field goals well on this court don't you think I mean they they shoot well on this floor so uh, I'm sure Rick Ray's looking for a little tightening up of the defense not only are the Red Hawks last in field goal percent defense in their conference, they are in the 320s out of 350 nationally. 
So that's not where you want to be defensively. And a three by Howard. That one front rimmed and undercut and hitting the floor is Camba. And let's see if a Red Hawk is going to get called for a foul. But Camba went down hard and he pops right to his feet. He was helped up by Albert Christensen. That looked awkward, didn't it? It looked it like really it did. could really be an injury type fall, but he was helped by Red Hawk. I actually grabbed him and kept him from taking that hard tumble. Unruh and Christensen check out. Jeff Lowry, veteran guard, is in. And also Tanner Schmidt, a 6'8 sophomore from Buffalo, New York. Schmidt coming off his best game as a Bear in his two years at UCA. 22 points in the loss to Little Rock Tuesday. Red Hawks get a steal. Taj Eady to the rack, missed the layup, and it's knocked out by UCA. Boy, that was an excellent outlet pass there by Vronish. That's where you get the fast break, that first pass out of the shoot. Didn't get the layup, but still it was a good, uh, good pass by Vronish. Inbounding to Taj Eady. And he will two-handed left for Simmons. Touches it to Cleveland. Right back to Taj. Red Hawks working the perimeter passing game. Matchup zone defense here for Central Arkansas. Left side, Edie. One dribble. Vronish out front for three. That came up short. Red Hawks ice cold from the field. Now one for eight shooting. The Red Hawks one for eight. And the Bears are four for eight. And have a 10 to three lead. Red Hawks. We'll try to get the shooting numbers headed in the right direction. Jeff Lowry is going to run the point here. He is from Phoenix, Arizona, and transferred from Grand Canyon University. Their head coach, Russ Pennell, or Pennell, yeah, came traveled, from Grand Canyon. No the, question about that travel, Larry. The first touch for Tanner Schmidt, who just checked in as their backup post player, has called for traveling, working against Trey Kellum. And the Red Hawks, with an early seven-point deficit, will bring the ball across center court. Tajidi, you're going to see his minutes go up with the injuries now to Dondre Duffus and to Jonathan Dalton. The Red Hawks backup point guard is in concussion protocol, unavailable today, and probably won't play Sunday at the University of Indiana. Antonius Cleveland to the left baseline. Nice up and under move, and he punches it with a right hand. And the Red Hawks all-conference senior, Antonius Cleveland, is in the scorebook. Well, see if that doesn't ignite the Red Hawks, because it really does a lot. That type of dunk that Antonio Cleveland comes up with. Five nothing run and Schmidt will kick it to the perimeter. Lowry to the free throw line, lost the ball, it's loose. Going to the ground is Vronish, it gets thrown out of bounds and who hit, who hit it? One of the Red Hawks touched it. And Coach Rick Ray clapping his hands. Coach Rick Ray under his suit and maybe we can get a camera on it for you for the video. For the OVC Digital Network, he's got a Superman T-shirt on under his suit tonight in honor of Superhero Night. Just waiting to take that jacket off. And here's the thing. If he would win tonight with that Superhero T-shirt, I, I got to say, it goes underneath every every uh, every dress shirt the rest of the year, right? You got to stay with the, oh, yeah. with the Superman. And you got to show it after this game if you win, <laughs> don't you? That's right. Inbounds play. Comes to Jordan Howard, now a three in the right corner, and an out for Derek Brooks. Brooks played 40 minutes in their overtime game on Tuesday. Here is Antonius Cleveland, bounces low post left to Trey Kellum, comes left baseline, had it stripped, and Derek Brooks gets out on the run. A five on one for the layup. Really, a five on one. Was that Camba that put it in, Jess? Um, I got Lowry. Okay. Jeff Lowry with his first basket. A five on one for Central Arkansas. You, you better finish, you got a five on one. And the Bears did. Lean in, tough shot, tough angle for Antonius Cleveland. He came in right of the paint, got bumped by Tanner Schmidt and free throws upcoming for Antonius Cleveland, who's now in his senior season out of Memphis. You know, Eric, you talk about not taking that Superman shirt off if you win as, you know, keep using that shirt. I've known guys that won't change socks until they lose. <laughs> Don't do a wash. That gets painful. And not so much for them, but uh, for those around them. No, I'm talking about the ones around them. I don't care about those guys that want to wear it, but it gets painful for everybody else. Antonius Cleveland knocks down the free throw. He was seven of eight from the line Monday in the loss at Kansas City, and Antonius hits them both. Got that free throw percentage up near 70, 
And that's big because he came in a career 59% foul shooter. He is getting better from the free throw line, and he has really been working on it. Entry feed down to Tanner Schmidt. He'll kick it to the perimeter. A three-pointer is there for Jordan Howard. You might want to guard the guy who's number two on their all-time schools list for made threes. And the Red Hawks did not have anybody out there to highly contest the shot. And that makes it 15 to 7, an eight-point lead here for the Bears. Antonius Cleveland goes against the 6'8 Tanner Schmidt, beat him to the right baseline, and as he went up with the ball, it squirted free, and Derek Brooks runs it down for Central Arkansas. Matthew Camba, who is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, splits the defense all the way to the rack and finger rolls it home in a timeout for Rick Ray. He does not like his team's defense. They came in last in the OVC, and they are not playing well here early. Hamba just went right down the lane. Very. And no one challenged him. A very aggressive move. I tell you, Central Arkansas has come in here really looking like they're wanting to play some basketball tonight, don't they? I mean, they're really aggressive, moving the ball around good, closing up the lanes on defense, and kind of maybe got a surprise lick on Southeast, 10 to nothing at the beginning. Southeast chopped it down to five points with 12 to seven. Now they've upped it back up to 10 again. Scouting report on Jordan Howard is he has exceptionally deep range. Yeah. So if you're coming out and guarding Howard, you know you he's go not farther. a guy that is not going to, you know, tiptoe up to the three-point arc. He's going to launch from anywhere. Exactly. He's I hit 175 career three-pointers, and this is only his third season. When you say that last three that he hit was close to NBA three? Very I close. mean, it was not, maybe not quite, but it was close. For the second time of the game, the Red Hawks find themselves down by double digits. 17-7, long way to go, 12 minutes to play first half. Antonius Cleveland, wing left. Bounces left baseline for Trey Kellen, but he's 15 feet away. Now Taj Edey into the lane, drops it baseline for Cleveland. And as he went up, he got bumped, and that'll be two on Tanner Schmidt. That's a problem for head coach Rush Pennell. Pennell just played with Scotty Pippen back 1982 to 1984 at Central Arkansas. He started out at the University of Arkansas as a player. And Played with Scotty Pippen. There's the free throw. He was a point guard. Free throw for Cleveland, and he is three for three. Cleveland has five points to lead the Red Hawks. I remember Scotty Pippen in college, Eric. He was already so mature. He could uh, he could do all of it. Bring the ball down on the press and everything. You could tell that Scotty Pippen was going to wind up in the NBA. Not only in the NBA, in the Hall of Fame. Top 75 players of all time. But he and lost a couple times at Cape. And if my memory serves. Growing up in Illinois, I was a Bulls fan before they got Jordan and Pippen, back when they had Reggie Theus and Artis Gilmore and some of those guys. But it was fun to watch the Pippen and Jordan years he as walked. a Bulls fan. And we're going to get yeah. a travel here. New player into the game, Daraja Parnell, freshman from Andover, Kansas. Really starting to come on, Parnell. Who was a very highly touted wide receiver in football. He got a Division I football offer from Toledo, among other schools, to play football. But he is staying with basketball, just a freshman. And he was called for traveling. 12 to shoot here. Red Hawks down by eight. Simmons to the paint. 
Kicks it perimeter right for Edie, right back to Simmons. Ball fake, swings it left. Here comes Cleveland, pulls up from 12, missed the shot. Great defense on Cleveland by Jeff Lowry. He made Antonius take a tough shot, and then Antonius in frustration comes back and fouls Lowry. That's really good defense by Jeff Lowry, who transferred from Grand Canyon University. That is where Coach Pennell came from. Played in 35 games at Grand Canyon. Now he had to sit out last year. It's his second season here. Or he had to sit out one year after transferring. His second year here at UCA. His brother is an assistant coach on this team, Josh Lowry, who was a point guard at Pepperdine. But Jeff Lowry just got fouled a moment ago, playing partially under his brother, Josh, who's an assistant for Coach Pennell. Left baseline, Camba, nice strip by Trey Kellum, and that saved the basket. That was going to be a layup or a dunk for Camba. No doubt about it. Great hands by Trey. Trey Kellum saving a, a hoop. Let's see if the Red Hawks can turn defense into offense. Jalen Benton. Now taking over left side of the floor, Tajidi swing it high for Denzel Mahoney. Now Mahoney at 20 points Monday has not scored so far in this game. And right now the Red Hawks are having trouble attacking that matchup zone. Spinning into the lane is Benton. He lost the ball and we get a personal foul coming up. Going for the loose ball. Taj Edey and Jeff Lowry were going for the loose ball. A couple of starters coming back in. Jordan Howard and Thatch Unruh. And Lowry will sit down along with Kamba. Otas E.A.K. Polar is into the game. E.A.K. Polar, he is out of Edmonton, Canada. And a missed shot from the Red Hawks, but cleaning it up with his first basket of the night is Trey Callum, and the Red Hawks have cut it to six. 17 to 11. Trey got that inside lane there on offense. Jess, he's the number one offensive rebounder in the Ohio Valley Conference, and Trey that's Kellum. From, that's just from hard work, Eric. You gotta work to get that inside lane when you're you know, on offense, and Trey had perfect position. And Thatch Unruh, who is from Branson, Missouri, back in his home state, lobs it out for Derek Brooks. He'll be picked up by Jalen Benson. Three ball out front, and this one too strong for Jordan Howard. Calvin the rebound, get it ahead to Simmons, comes down the lane and makes a tough angled runner. Daniel Simmons and the Red Hawks have cut it to four, 17-13. That was a really good finish by Simmons, Jess. It looked like he, and a layup by Darn, Darnell, Daraja Parnell. But it looked like Daniel Simmons might have been uh, off balance or went off the wrong foot. It looked a very awkward layup attempt, but he got it to go. Red Hawks back down by six, another layup for Central Arkansas. Here's a three by Denzel Mahoney, left it short. And the Red Hawks are now one for seven from three-point range. One for seven. A three by Brooks. That one came up short. Trey Kellum clears. Outlet to Jalen Benson. Here comes the Red Hawks shooting guard. Top of the key. Swings it right. Open three for Simmons. And that one rimmed away. And it's picked up by Jordan Howard. The all-Southland Conference guard got it ahead to Brooks, had it poked loose. Jalen Benson gets out on the run. The Red Hawks have a three-on-three, three and the layup for Denzel Mahoney off the feed from Jalen Benton. And the Red Hawks turn that turnover into points. They've cut it to four in 19-15. And Denzel Mahoney is on the board after his 20-point game and the loss to the Kangaroos in Kansas City on Monday night. Raja Parnell down to the left baseline. Leans in wow. and got right around Denzel Mahoney. Well, there wasn't nothing wrong about that shot. A move. That was a great move. Parnell, terrific play. And here is Trey Kellum finishing right under the basket with a left hand. Trey Kellum, 14 points and eight rebounds against UMKC on Monday. I happen to think he's a very, very important player for this team, don't you? Kellum stays in that game most of the game. He is so valuable. Fifth year senior. OAK Polar. And it's going to get out of bounds. 7.28 on the clock. We are at the Show Me Center. And the Central Arkansas Bears got out to a 10 0 lead.
Hackers are brilliant. At Southeast Missouri State, our students are better. We're four-time Missouri cyber defense champs, constantly learning new languages to protect and defend real-world threats. Our cybersecurity program was the first of its kind in Missouri. Our faculty are industry professionals. And did we mention 100% of our grads get jobs? Tomorrow's threats? They may not be invented yet, but our students are ready. place get a health point fitness gift card for that special someone for Christmas the Red Hawks injury report includes Dondre Duffus who is missing a second straight game with a growing injury they do not know what the problem is with his groin he's getting another test they don't know if it's just rest or surgery that is needed but they still do not have a final determination on Dondre Duffus so he won't play tonight Jonathan Dalton suffered a concussion against UMKC Monday. He is in street clothes tonight. He is doubtful according to Rick Ray, backup point guard Jonathan Dalton for Sunday at Indiana. And of course, Ray Kowalski on the injury report with torn meniscus in his knee. It is healing nicely, but he is going to redshirt. And of course, Joel Angus out for the year. He just had hip surgery, just had it on Tuesday. And so we certainly wish Joel Angus a speedy recovery from hip surgery. Red Hawks down by four, they've got the basketball. Out front, Jamal Calvin. Swings it right for Mahoney, now Jalen Benton takes over, stops at the arc, finds Cleveland who gets it to Calvin. Calvin jumps up from the left arc and misses the three, and somehow a deflection. It comes to William Chenga, well, Jess, so what a lucky bounce, and Chenga lays it in. was Jamal Calvin, he followed the shot, Eric, and as soon as he got the rebound by Central Arkansas, he just was there to punch it away. Lowry into the lane, pulls up from eight. Nice move by Jeff Lowry, and he finishes. That's boy, you tell points. people to follow the shots, but boy, when it when you do, you know, good things happen like that. Jeff Lowry, whose mother played basketball at the University of Washington, gets into the lane and shows some of those basketball skills he may have gotten from mom. He's originally from Seattle, Washington, but Phoenix, Arizona listed as his hometown. And Arizona, that's where Grand Canyon University is, where he transferred from. Nice move by Lowry. Red Hawks are down by four, 23-19. We tick under 6.30 to play before halftime. Left corner, Denzel Mahoney fakes the three, finds Calvin. Now Cleveland swings it corner right. Benton out front, Mahoney. Works it left for Calvin. Couple of dribbles, shot clock at one. Desperation three goes down for Antonius Cleveland off the left side. Right as the shot clock buzzer expired, he <coughs> pounds one home from distance. Boy, remember that one. I put a little check mark by that one, Eric, because that may come back to be a big game shot. Huge triple by Antonius Cleveland. It's a one-point game. Central Arkansas 23, the Red Hawks 22. <laughs> Christensen back in the game. He's got it on the baseline. He stepped out of bounds. Albert Christensen, who is from Lund, Sweden, his hometown, Jess, of Lund, Sweden, is the oldest city in present-day Sweden in the entire country. Lund, Sweden, was founded in 990. Wow. You don't hear many dates before no. 1,000, do you? No. Lund, Sweden, founded in 990, the oldest city in modern-day Sweden, Albert Christensen. Here's an alley-oop, and... Cleveland was unable to finish. Christensen gets the rebound. Boy, Cleveland was close, but it just didn't go down. Camba back into the game, throws it right baseline, and the shot goes, and Jordan Howard is fouled by William Chenga. And Jordan Howard will head to the line, a chance for a three-point play, and there's only one player in their entire 13-team conference that's a better free-throw shooter than this guy. Second in the Southland. 93% free throw shooter. That is pretty good. Jesse came in with 1,084 points. He's the 18th player in Central Arkansas history to score 1,000 points. He's not even a senior yet. And he finishes the three-point place and that guy to the line, and you're just giving him free points because he's not missing. He is now 29 for 31 from the free throw line. 26-22. And the... 
2 1 2 zone press. All right, look, 2 2 1 zone press. Red Hawks dribble through it. You hear Rick Ray said, hey, their press is not to turn you over, it's to run clock and shorten possessions. Deep three by Jalen Benton. Front rimmed it, and high for the rebound is Jordan Howard. Got the outlet away to their star, Derek Brooks. Throw it to Christensen, and it's picked off by Antonius Cleveland. And they say Christensen was over Cleveland's back. And the foul will be on Albert Christensen, who is in his third year at Central Arkansas. He's an international economic business major out of Sweden. 26-22. Red Hawks trailing by four. They have never had the lead in this game. They were down 10 nothing to start the game. And have chipped their way back in it. At once cut it to one. Right now they're down four. Vranish plays right for Edie. Bounces low post right back to the basket. Kellum in against Christensen. Missed the turnaround. Loose ball picked up by Jordan Howard. Out on the run. Lowry elbow jumper on the way. And he front rimmed it into the hands of Cleveland. Falling out of bounds. Throws it to midcourt. Vranish has got it. Great play by Cleveland to save a turnover. Tajidi, crossover dribble, handed back Vranish. Thought about a three and then turned it over. Here comes Kamba in for the layup. And the Red Hawks, that is the definition of points off turnovers. Yeah. Milos Vranish turned it over. They got points, and now the Red Hawks are down by six. Yeah, if you turn it over any time around the half court line, it's going to be too easy. Red Hawks, here's a three by Vranish, and he makes up for the turnover by pounding home a triple. He's a terrific shooter. Now, Vranish came into this game shooting 47% from three. That's the ninth best three-point percentage in the entire conference. You, and you break up a zone, Eric, with that. That's what you need to break up a zone is good outside shooting. So Vranish is a top 10 three-point shooter in the Ohio Valley Conference. But he doesn't take a lot of them. Here's a three, and it goes down for Jordan Howard. Right arc, his second triple. He is torching the Red Hawks. 11 first-half points for Howard. 11, the lead is back to six. And again, he's made the second most threes in Central Arkansas history, so uh, you can't give him a look from three. Ball out of bounds on the missed shot by Taj Eady. They say it was touched last by Trey Kellum, and the Red Hawks are down a half a dozen as we head to the media timeout. Good game, 3-12 to play. Here in the first half, the Central Arkansas Bears, who came in leading the Southland Conference in three-point shooting, have There's more to history than books. At Southeast Missouri State, we're getting our hands dirty and preserving history. Our classrooms are museums, homes, and historic sites. Because the past can teach us so much more when it can be touched. We're preparing for the future. Because to know where you're going, you must know where you've been. Red Hawks basketball is brought to you by Kohlfeld, distributing distributors of Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. 31-25, the lead is a half a dozen right now for Central Arkansas. Derek Brooks double team, leans in, had it swatted away from behind by Antonius Cleveland, got it back and fights up a shot and scores. Even in a double team, the Red Hawks can't defend Derek Brooks on that play. And Daniel Simmons dribbles the ball right out of bounds. So the Red Hawks give up a basket on a guy they have triple team after swatting the ball away from him and then turn it over on the offensive end. 
Tough segment there for Southeast. 33-25, and the Bears, who've been up by 10 points twice, can go up 10 points for a third time here in the first half. The Red Hawks were down 10-0 to start the game. Cut it to one, and another layup for Camba, and they're back up 10 for the third time in the game. Nine points for Camba. 35-25, and the team from Central Arkansas shooting 63%. That is unacceptable for a Division I team to come to your floor and shoot over 60%. You know, Eric, you talk about all the road games they've had. It, it's made them road tough. They actually are playing a good basketball game. They are used to being on the road. You know what I mean, Jazz? Yeah. You can't give up 63% shooting on your home floor to anybody. The no. Red Hawks are. Cross court pass, Camba to the baseline, finds Christensen wide open is Lowry, and that won't go. Man, was he open. And the Red Hawks are fortunate he was unable to cash in as open as he was. You see the difference between the two teams defensively. The Red Hawks aren't getting looks like that very often, like Lowry just had, but could not cash in with. Trey Kellum, fall away 12 footer, left it short, rebound to Mahoney, and an easy putback. Well, and that, that time, Camba and Cleveland hit the floor. We did not get a whistle. And Mahoney with a big offensive that, stick I'd back. have to say that's the easiest two points Mahoney's got in Division I basketball. When you couldn't be any easier than that. Nobody around him right under the goal. 35-27. And he'll take it. Red Hawks in that man-to-man -man defense. Lowry comes right into the lane. He runs over Denzel Mahoney and a charging foul. Great job by the freshman to stand his ground. And just that, a play like that can pick up a struggling defensive unit. Absolutely, and, and Denzel saw that play developing. It wasn't like he stepped over in, in the path of the, of the offensive player right at the last. He saw that play developing and got in great position. Taj Eady will bring it across center court. Now Mahoney, who just drew the charge. We're under a minute to play before halftime. Red Hawks down eight. Need a basket here for a little momentum. Three ball left corner, Mahoney left it short and it's tipped and grabbed by Brooks. Throw it ahead to Camba, in against Cleveland, laid it up, won't go. Christensen over everybody's back to grab it and Christensen is called for the personal foul. Christensen played 10 minutes in the Arkansas Little Rock game but he did not score and did not have a rebound in 10 minutes. On Tuesday, Tanner Schmidt played the bulk of the minutes up front for them. He played 24 minutes, had 22 points, a career high, but Schmidt has been on the bench for quite a while. He's been in foul trouble. And so they'll have to go deeper into their bench. Ethan Lee will come in. He played 10 minutes against Little Rock on Tuesday. This is his fourth year. Ethan Lee, that includes a red shirt, last year. Into the color comes Edie. A kick out to Calvin. 15 on the shot clock. Now Mahoney a triple. That's good. Denzel Mahoney with seven. Red Hawks have cut it to five. Can they get a stop here before halftime? Timeout called by Jordan Howard. And third year head coach Russ Pennell will talk about it. Pennell came from Grand Canyon University where he was the head coach from 2009 to 2013. And then he made one stop with the Phoenix Mercury. He was the interim head coach of the Phoenix Mercury in the WNBA, took them to the Western Conference Finals. Coming to Central Arkansas, playing with Scotty Pippen. And the ball is tipped out of bounds. So Russ Pennell has been with some really big programs. And is in year three here at Central Arkansas. Nine seconds, their star Brooks comes across the line to the foul line, pull up jumper. Boy, that was too easy. He just dribbled up, took a shot, and made it. Half court shot at the buzzer. 
But Jess, if you're playing defense, their stars got the ball. He's three quarter court. He just dribbles all the way to the free throw line, pulls up, and sticks a jumper. Especially with seven or eight seconds to go, you got to pressure the ball, don't you? I, I agree with you. And so we have reached. We started as a teacher's college in 1873, but that doesn't mean we're old fashioned. At Southeast Missouri State, how we teach has certainly changed. We've partnered with Apple to create the world's only evolution center. And our learning communities offer support and collaboration from your first semester. Our program gets you in front of students year one. You're going to make a difference with the next generation, and we are going to prepare you. You want the world to be a better place, but you don't expect it to get there all on its own. You're a helper, a caregiver, a doer, and you're ready. At Southeast Missouri State, we have over 60 health studies programs. You can intern at two world-class hospitals right next door, do research with expert faculty, or use your business skills in a growing field. We're going to help you succeed here, so you can help the world get better out there. You can sing in the shower and doodle in the margins of a notebook for the rest of your life, or you can push your creativity to center stage and develop the skills to back it up. At Southeast Missouri State University, you can surround yourself with minds that are as creative and weird and beautiful as yours at a campus dedicated exclusively to the arts, with classmates who share your passion and faculty who know the industry. You've got talent. Let's see what you got. Your brothers don't care. Your sisters don't care. The intramural field, the Greek week trophy, the homecoming float, they don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We don't care. Greeks don't care! If you have values, you have value. Southeast Missouri State University, committed to diversity in Greek life. The stage doesn't care. The studio doesn't care. The concert hall, the dance floor, the box office, they don't care. If you can act, you can act. If you can draw, you can draw. The Holland School of Visual and Performing Arts does not care. If you can play, you can play. This is your beginning. The entire world is before you. Every opportunity is yours. Make the most of it. At Southeast Missouri State University, you're here for more than a degree. You're here to do whatever it takes. We don't just learn from textbooks. We learn from each other. That's why we tackle our challenges, fuel innovation, and never settle. We're giving you the tools to learn, to lead, to grow, to do. from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. The hardwood doesn't care. The gridiron doesn't care. The diamond doesn't care. The tracks, the courts, the fields, they don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We don't care. I don't care. Southeast Missouri State University doesn't care. If you can play, you can play. 
This is not your mom's Southeast Missouri State University. Today, you'll do the work before you get the job. And when your tenacity is tested, your strengths are stretched, and your confidence secured, we'll help you find the place where you'll be extraordinary. At Southeast Missouri State, we're proud of where we've been, but we're focused on where we're going. And right now, we have opportunities you didn't even know existed. Court appointed special advocates or CASA volunteers speak for children who are navigating the court system. CASA volunteers have one focus to serve the best interests of the child who is facing neglect, abuse, foster care, or adoption. Last year in our area, over 1,000 children who could have used a CASA volunteer did not have one. You can make a difference. You can help. You can be a voice for a child. Volunteer. Donate. Participate. Call 1-855-7-VOICES. Not all classrooms are created equal. You can't just learn about life. You have to do it. At Southeast Missouri State University, we can't wait to see what you do. Gum tree, cardiac hill, and countless traditions that will make you proud to be a Red Hog or just gross you out. What are you waiting for? Schedule your visit today. A healthy smile is a powerful thing. It deserves Delta Dental, the nation's leading dental benefits provider. We make it easy to protect your smile and keep it healthy. They say you only regret the things you don't do. At Southeast Missouri State University, we wouldn't know, because doing is what we do best. Here, alarm clocks thunder like starting guns. Working harder, comes second only to working smarter. And there is no secret to success, only the will to do. The dome doesn't care. The classroom doesn't care. The stage, the lab, the stadium, they don't care. I don't care. We don't care. We don't care. Your professor doesn't care. Your advisor doesn't care. Your RA doesn't care. Southeast Missouri State University doesn't care. If you're a Red Hawk, you are a Red Hawk. Sweet style or community, new construction or seasoned, we have the rooms to match your personality. What are you waiting for? Schedule your visit today. Yeah. 
she? Mera, Queen of Atlantis! You say so. And the Green Arrow! Love Green Arrow. Our final is the Green Arrow! Lady Green Lantern! And go to the Princess Jedi! Alright, real quick, the Green Arrow! To the Jedi and Green Lantern! The Jedi! Hello everyone and welcome back to the Show Me Center. It's halftime here as Central Arkansas is up 37 to 30 on the SEMO Red Hawks. So far through the first half, Jordan Howard is leading the Bears in scoring with 11 points. He's also been able to grab five rebounds so far and also gotten one steal and one assist. Derek Brooks, who we highlighted the pregame, has nine points so far along with four rebounds, two steals, and he's made one three-pointer. The Bears are 4 for 10 from downtown so far in this game. Meanwhile, the Red Hawks are 4 for 16 from downtown. Leading the Red Hawks in scoring is Antonius Cleveland at 9 points. He's also got 1 block, 1 steal, and 2 rebounds. Also for the Red Hawks, Trey Kellum has grabbed 1 offensive board and 2 defensive while scoring 4 points and also has 1 steal. We'll see how it all plays out in the second half. But first, we want to remind you about our upcoming game for the Red Hawks. On Sunday, they'll take on Missouri State. So be sure to check that out. I'm sorry, on Tuesday, they'll take on Missouri State. So be sure to check that one out on the OVC Digital Network. But now, we're going to go back to Eric Sean for the second half. Offense from turnovers. That was a big part of what happened in the first half. Oh yeah, it's always a big part. It's just like errors in baseball. You look back at that stat and it's always gonna come back to haunt you. And the, the but I, I look for the Red Hawks to play a much better game this second half. Uh, uh, you know, I think you're, I don't think you're surprised when a team comes out and jumps on you 10 to nothing, but they kind of left Southeast at the starting gate when the game opened and uh, jumped off that 10 point lead. And any lead like that, a double-digit lead, I know it's, it doesn't seem like, well, with three-point shots now, that's not insurmountable. But uh, when you're not making them, it is insurmountable. And the Red Hawks just never could get over it. But I think oh, yeah. it's like Stop. Southeast in the first half, 11 of 29 shooting. They attempted 16 three-point baskets. Red Hawks were 4 of 16, 25%. And they were great from the free throw line, or more specifically, Antonius Cleveland was great. He had all four of the Red Hawks free throws in four attempts. So Red Hawks had scored them four to one from the free throw line, but uh, they really have been getting shots that they want in evidence, the 59% from the field. The Red Hawks were only out rebounded by one and they were they out rebounded central arkansas five to two on the offensive glass that led to a slight uh advantage for the red hawks in second chance points by a score of six to two so southeast uh getting 10 bench points in the first half and the bench points coming from taj Eady had three or i should say Tajidi had three, three points for Milos Vranish, Daniel Simmons, William Chenga, each with two points each, Jess, as far as uh, getting their way back into this game in the second half. Uh, Southeast scoring 30 points in the first half, which is under what they normally score. So you would say the offense likely picks up in the second half if the Red Hawks are going to do what they normally do, and that's get into the mid-70s as far as offensive point production. But... It's all going to come down to what are the Red Hawks going to do on the defensive end of the floor. Now, last year, they scored 10 points fewer than they score this year. 
So it was really, really important that they try to do something on the defensive end. But this year, the Red Hawks offense is fine, just fine. It all comes down to what's that other team's shooting percentage. Yeah, and if the Red Hawks are going to get their average, no, no more, just their average of what they score uh, per game, they should get 46 points in the second half. And I think the first five minutes of this second half, Eric, is critical for Southeast. When you're down by seven, you can't come out and be slow out of the gate the second half, too. I think they need a good start in the first five minutes. See where they're at at the 15-minute mark. That might tell you what's going to happen the rest of the game. Jaime Garcia traded by the St. Louis Cardinals today. By the way, the Crown Glass Company halftime report. The Red Hawks, or the Cardinals, get a pair of right-handed minor league pitchers, John Gant and Chris Ellis from the Atlanta Braves, and an infield prospect named Luke Dykstra. Jaime Garcia traded by the Cardinals today for three minor leaguers from the Atlanta Braves. Jamal Calvin buries a three from the right arc and a good start for the Red Hawks on the offensive end of the floor. First basket tonight for Jamal Calvin. And in his career, Jamal Calvin, that is the 87th three-pointer that he has banged home as a Red Hawk. Ball deflected and stolen. Red Hawks on a four-on-one break. Pull-up jumper, Calvin, no good. A four-on-one, and the Red Hawks do not score. Four-on-one, and they settled for a 15-footer. That kind of surprised me, didn't it? You, I thought he would continue driving for the uh, basket. And a three-pointer in and out by Jordan Howard. You got to finish four on ones, Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's And you keep driving for the basket, somebody's going to keep be open. It's not being critical of the Red Hawks. I mean, Coach Ray will tell you right away, four on one, you got to score on that play. So credit to uh, Central Arkansas. They got the rebound, three-pointer in the right corner from Antonius Cleveland. And that one was way off the mark. Cleveland, three for nine shooting threes coming into this game. 37-33, missed jumper by Tanner Schmidt, who is playing with two personal fouls. Jalen Benton in transition, got behind everybody and laid it in. First basket for Benton. Red Hawks have cut it to two. 37-35, Derek Brooks into the lane. Double clutches it up, rejected by Trey Kellum. Kellum sent it out for Trey. His third block shot of the season. Cleveland is the Red Hawks shot blocks leader with seven coming in. Red Hawks really don't have a rim protector, Jess. They have recruited a six foot nine inch guy for next year, and he is a rim protector. So they will get a shot blocker slash rim protector next year. Here's a deep three that won't go down for Thatch Unruh from Branson, Missouri. And the Red Hawks will go to work trailing by two. They have never led in this game. Three ball, Calvin for the lead. And it's off the heel of the rim. Camba snatches down the rebound. Matthew Camba, top of the circle. Works it right for Howard. Now Camba takes over. Dribble drive, kicks it left corner for Unruh. And his three-pointer came up short. Jamal Calvin got the outlet away to Jalen Benson. Runs the floor, approaches from the right. Lays it for Kellum, who puts it in. A transition hoop, and the Red Hawks have eliminated three different 10-point deficits to tie the game and a timeout for the Bears. Here's our email address again, by the way. It is semoradio at gmail.com, S-E-M-O, semoradio at gmail.com, and we will read your emails. As far as OVC basketball goes, the Red Hawks, well, we'll get to the OVC scores, Jess, but the Red Hawks uh, co going forward are going to play a 3 o'clock game at the University of Indiana on Sunday. And you saw Indiana beat third-ranked North Carolina last night, and they came out blistering hot from the field. Uh, it was a capacity crowd. The ESPN television broadcasters, Dave O'Brien and Dick Vitale, said it is the loudest building that they have broadcast from this year. That's where the Red Hawks are going. Well, Sunday. Indiana had a bad loss with the Indiana uh, Purdue uh, Fort Wayne. Uh, but the victories over Kansas and, and, uh, and then last night over North Carolina, Eric, makes me believe that Indiana's got to be in the top four or five teams in the nation. Now, I don't know about Kentucky. Kentucky's well, they were ranked there, third when they lost to Fort Wayne. So. 
unbelievably good looking basketball team, I, I think. And uh, they've got but, all of the, they can shoot the three, they've got size. Oh, yeah. And play good defense. Yeah. And, and they, got the crowd support, too. They got everything. And they've got a terrific coach in Tom Crean. And in this game here, though, the Redhawks come out just like Central Arkansas did in the first half 7 0 run for the Redhawks. 37, zero, uh, 37 to 30 halftime deficit erased here in two minutes and 39 seconds of the second half. You've outscored Central 7-0, and it's 37 up now with 17-14. Red Hawks have never had the lead. Can they get a stop and get the lead? Unruh, one hands it right for Howard. Now a ball deflected out. Canvas pass back to Howard, and Mahoney jumped the passing lane. Tipped it out, 10 on the shot clock here for the Bears as they inbound. On the sideline, Howard swings it left for Unruh, eight to shoot, jumps it into the post for Schmidt. Ball tipped away and stolen by the Red Hawks. They can take their first lead of the night. Here comes Cleveland and he was fouled by Thatch Unruh and Antonius will have to earn them from the free throw line where he is four for four tonight. Thatch Unruh, the personal foul father and one of his brothers played college basketball thatch unruh his brother now playing professionally in europe he is from branson was an all-conference player at branson high school spent one year at quakerdale prep before coming to central arkansas and the free throw from cleveland gives the red hawks their first lead of the night 38 37 and the red hawks have come out defensively here in this quarter and held Central Arkansas to an 0 for 5 start. The defense is what has gotten it done for the Red Hawks. And the free throw is there for six Cleveland. For six for Cleveland from the line. He went 7 of 8 against UMKC Monday. So he is now 13 of his last 14 from the free throw line. Right corner, Jordan Howard, their all conference guard, plays catch with Jeff Lowry. To the right baseline camp, a bounce in for Schmidt, and a whistle will stop play. And that's Christensen, and he will go to the free throw and line. Cleveland Albert picks that foul up. I think that's two on Cleveland. Christensen, he's in his junior season. He's been a sub 50% free throw shooter his whole career at UCA, and he missed that one. In his career from the free throw line, 47%, 43 of 92 from Lund, Sweden. Big guy, 6'9". This is the 60th game he has played as a Division I player at Central Arkansas in his career. His third year at UCA, and he hits the back end of the two-shot foul. 39-38. Red Hawks were down by seven at halftime and that's the first point here in the second half for uca the red hawks held them scoreless for three and a half minutes denzel mahoney just got body checked by christensen and christensen with a puzzled look on his face yeah, he thought he had set a good uh, a block there and had the charge coming but didn't get it red hawks will inbound and no one's going to inbound the ball who's going to inbound it Absolutely. Officials are going to throw it in. The officials are going to get uh, angry after a while. They just start they set the ball down and start counting. Mahoney got it into Benton. Thought about a three. Kicks it right. Open three for Cle Calvin. Passed it up to Cleveland. His three pointer. No rebound to Kellum. The putback. No. The second putback goes. Good work by Trey Kellum. Forty side lane on offense. Three point Red Hawk lead. And this is their largest lead of the night. They had not led all night prior to taking a lead a moment ago. And Howard, boy, he got knocked to the floor after the shot. No whistle. And then the Red Hawks turn it over on their way back up the floor. I'm stunned they did not call a foul there. There was a lot of contact that knocked Jordan Howard to the floor. And the Red Hawks got away with it momentarily, but then quickly threw the ball away.
go into halftime and you have a little plan on what you're going to adjust during the game, and I thought Rick Ray must have made some good points. Well, Central Arkansas 0 for 6 to start the second half. The Red Hawks are 4 of 9, including the two free throws from Antonius Cleveland. Two years ago when Russ Pennell took over this team, they went 2 and 27. They finished last in the Southland Conference last year, and he was, he's was he been doing a lot of red shirting. He is red shirting a lot of players knowing Hey, we're, we're going to get these guys a red shirt, get them bigger, stronger, familiar with the program, familiar with what we're running. Last year, they went from two wins to seven wins. They were 7-21. and 21. They finished 11th in the Southland Conference. There are 13 teams that play basketball in the Southland Conference. This year, they are off to a 1-5 and five start, but a brutal, brutal schedule at Wisconsin, at Oklahoma State, this is their sixth road game already in seven contests. In fact, just in the entire first semester of school, first semester, they have only two home games in the first semester. Well, that is a tough schedule. That is absolutely tough. And their first home game, big rivalry game with Arkansas Little Rock, a really good team, won their league a year ago. And when you Central say they, Arkansas turns it over, they but got they a took better, them to overtime. Better team than a one and five record. From if they had a few of those games at home, it may be a little different. From what we have seen, yeah, against lesser competition than Wisconsin, yeah. Oklahoma State, Cleveland, right corner, a three ball for Benton. Ring it up for Jalen Benton. He's got five, and the Red Hawks have a six-point lead, 44-38. We approach 15-15 to play here in the second half. Working around the screen, Jeff Lowry. Into the color, kicks it back perimeter. Kamba, he comes into the lane, jumps it low for Christensen, fights up a shot, it does not go down. Cleveland the rebound, Red Hawks get out on the run. Benton, a crossover to the right baseline, dropped it for Kellum, who scores, and the foul. And the Red Hawks have an eight point lead, and their best free throw shooter is going to the line, Trey Kellum. And they're on a 16 to one run this second half. We're at the five minute mark now, 14.55. And that sets the tone on this second half when you jump out to 16 to one and possibly 17 to one run. Free throw by Kellum and he missed it, but a rebound and a put back for Mahoney. So that turned into a four point possession for the Red Hawks. The other way goes Lowry can't finish at the rim. Rebound to Cleveland. Red Hawks have a 10-point lead. Remember, they trailed by 10 three different times in the first half. Now they're up 10. Double-teamed as Kellum tries to dribble out of it. Got it to Mahoney. Here's a triple. Got it! And the lead is 13, and the Red Hawks are red hot. Hey, you call that an explosion, Eric? You 21, 21 to one run in this second half. You've held the other team for five minutes and 36 seconds to one point. The Red Hawks have scored 12 points in the last one minute and 44 seconds. Just 12 points. opening five and a half minutes. And if I had to guess, I would guess that one of the things that Rick Ray talked about at halftime was, look, what will bring us back in this game and ignite our offense is defense. And the Red Hawks came out slapping the ball around, making it tough, uh, tough angle shots for Central Arkansas, and they got a few quick baskets themselves, and all at once, bam, less than five minutes here, or a little more than five minutes. Uh, 21 to one run. I, I tell you what, once you get a team to buy into defense and they believe that's what's gonna get them a lot of W's, then it's a lot easier to sell. And if, if this is not a game to do that, I don't know what is. 
Red Hawks have held them without a field goal in the opening. And the guy five that just minutes. kicked that ball out of bounds, Mahoney, is one of the guys that's played excellent defense this second half. Mahoney's also pumped in five points. Jordan Howard plays catch with Lowry. Now Howard sliding right, can't get a look from three. Kicks it back left to Lowry, comes into the lane, runs up the shot in the paint, it won't go, and it's grabbed by the freshman Parnell, and they reset. Out front, ball never hit the rim. Shot clock at five, Brooks inside. Benton is pulling the ball away from him, and Brooks ties him up with two to shoot, and a possession arrow will give it to the Bears. Our email address again, if you're tuning in the broadcast tonight, drop us an email, SEMO Radio at gmail.com s-e-m-o semo radio at gmail no emails thus far tonight two seconds to shoot they got to get rid of it quickly and a foul on jamal calvin a senior with two on the shot clock on the inbounds play boy that is you really bailed them out there now they get a fresh shot clock not a shooting foul but they get 30 seconds to play with and the freshman, Daraja Parnell from Andover, Kansas, went to Central High School there where he was an All-Stater, averaged 22 points and nine rebounds last year as a senior at Central. Lead is 13 for the Red Hawks. Derek Brooks has not scored in the second half. Slide it out to Jordan Howard. Now Jeff Lowry takes over, one-on-one -on -one with Benton. Back tap for Howard, gets to the 15-foot mark, pulls up with a jumper left of the circle, no good. Red Hawks throw it down and a layup for Benton. Courtesy of Jamal Calvin and Jalen Benson, who did not score in the first half, just has seven here in half number two. The lead is 15 for the Red yeah, Hawks. Yeah, one beautiful three from the corner. Remember the deep corner a while ago. Simo put $5.7 million into this building last year. Sliding for the loose ball. Howard coming up with it is Calvin. Red Hawks on a three on two. Kellum down the lane, flipped it in. And the foul on Ethan Lee. And right now, everything is going right for the Red Hawks. That time, Cal uh, Kellum just threw the ball up there on that drive, just hoping to get two shots on the foul. And he gets the basket, too. That's why. You always got to throw it towards the hoop because you never know. That ball just bounced in. It is a 25 to 1 run to start the second half. 25 to 1. No field goals for Central Arkansas in the opening seven minutes of the second half. Free throw. Kellum. Book it. 13 points for Trey Kellum, who came in. The 10th leading foul shooter in the OVC at 84%. Camba baseline knocked away as he came up a little bit short, and Kellum may have gotten a hand on that ball. He got the rebound, a three ball in transition. Benson got it! Three more! 29 to one run for the Red Hawks. 10 for Benton here in the first eight to seven and a half minutes. And a backcourt violation forced by Antonius Cleveland. The Superman shirt has all the powers here, Jess, tonight. Uh, Rick Ray. He's got that jacket open now, man. He's spreading those arms. He wants everybody to see that. Well, you can see that utility belt, too, <laughs> on the uh, Superman shirt. Yeah. The lead is 21 right now. Red Hawks, remember, they were down 10-0 in this game. They were down 17-7. They were down 35-25. And another jumper goes for Cleveland. He has 13. The Red Hawks have a 23-point lead. On Central Arkansas. 31 to 1 run. Three pointer off the mark for Unruh. Here comes Antonio. Shovel it back. Another three by Benton. He's on fire! Jalen Benton just raining it home from downtown. His third triple here in the second half. 13 points in the final 20 minutes here. And another steal. Benton comes into the paint. Curls handed back for Cleveland to Benton. This time he'll drive the baseline, flip it underneath the Callum for the deuce. Can you believe Central Arkansas is not getting a timeout at all, Jess? No. One point in this second half in almost a nine 30, minutes. This is a 36 to 1 run. Let me say that again. A 36 or a 35 to one run, 36. They just changed the scoreboard twice. 66-38.
A timeout. A 36 to one run. Eric, 36 point. The hardwood doesn't care. The gridiron doesn't care. The diamond doesn't care. The tracks, the courts, the fields, they don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We don't care. I don't care. Southeast Missouri State University doesn't care. If you can play, you can play. When you play good defense, it just helps offense. I mean, you get a little break here or there, a, a, a deflection and a fast break, an easy layup. Trey Kellum's been outstanding this second. And now all at once you got four Southeast players in double figures, led by Trey Kellum with 15, 13 for Cleveland, 13 for Benton, and 12 for Mahoney. Benton scored 13 points here in the second half. Wow. The Red Hawks, five of eight from three-point range, Jess. Five out of eight. Three and threes right now, for Benton here in a matter of eight minutes. Jess, Central Arkansas is 0 for 11 in the second half. Now, that is called being up if you're the Red Hawks. 66-38, a 36-1 to run. I'm not sure I've ever seen a 36-1 to run, Jess, no, in Division I, I basketball. No, I don't think I have anywhere. I don't know that I've ever seen that. Aaron uh, Widenauer is checked into the game. Widenauer is from Bozeman, Montana, and his family has a lot of athleticism in it. And a jump shot, no good by Parnell, out of bounds. Officials are looking at each other. They'll give it to the Red Hawks. Widenauer, who just checked in from Bozeman, Montana, freshman. He's got a brother, Zach Jess, that played football at Wyoming and then baseball at Northern Colorado. Got a brother, Gabe, that played baseball at Oklahoma State. And he's got a brother, Nate, that played baseball in the Braves organization. And before that, he played basketball at Montana State. I mean, that's a lot of athleticism in your family. Missed runner by Cleveland. Red Hawks deflect it and get it out front and will set up a new possession. So some playing time here for Aaron Widenauer. Played in every game for that. Couple of starts and loose ball. Picked up by Cleveland. Cross courted for Benton. Three pointer in the air. Too strong. Long rebound to Widenauer. 10 14 to play here in the game. Parnell, the freshman, hop step in the lane, finishes, and the foul. And their first field goal in the second half comes at 10 08. That was a pretty good run, Jess. The Red Hawks defensively. <laughs> Like I said, I've watched a lot of NBA games. Used to be a season ticket holder for the St. Louis Hawks. And I don't know that I've ever seen a 36 to one run anywhere. They missed their first 12 shots of the second half. 0 for 12. And are now one for 13 with the play by Parnell, who had eight points in 10 minutes against Little Rock. They had that one lonesome free throw by Christensen. And that was it. The free throw, but no field goals. And that one is a three-point play by Daraja Parnell. We mentioned a terrific high school wide receiver and could be playing football for the Toledo Rockets, but instead decided to accept a basketball scholarship offer. Daniel Simmons rams his way into the lane. Parnell hits the floor, and they're going to call. A foul on Parnell. It's a 15 foul already, too, on Central. Inbounds play. Daniel Simmons slide it left to Taj Edi to the free throw line. Taj jumps it down low to Mahoney, and he tried to finish, could not, and the rebound to Widenauer. In transition, Parnell. Really attacking the cup, and he got bumped to the floor and will head to the free throw line. The Red Hawks lead at 66 41. 
And Parnell, this season from the stripe, 83 percent. He just hit a free throw a moment ago. He He's like to be working on the house or something, Eric, or driving along, and stop to eat, and then at halftime you stop to eat and come back in. And in the first eight or nine minutes of this second half, and then hear the score. It was 37 to 30, Central Arkansas. To start the second half. That was their halftime lead. The Red Hawks went on a 36 to one run. And they have taken control. Parnell hits both free throws. He has hit three in a row from the strike. The lead is 23 right now for the Red Hawks. Jalen Benson left side of the floor. Bounces low post for Trey Killam. Back to the perimeter. Tajidi thought about driving. Jalen Benson finds Taj out front. He thought about the three. Bounce it low post left to Kellum. The turnaround is there. Over two blank jerseys. Boy, that was an athletic play by Trey Kellum. Kellum's got some good awareness under the goal, doesn't he? I mean, He's very crafty under yes, there. Yes, very good. That was a tough angle shot he made. Here's a steal. Edie into Kellum for the right-handed punch. That wasn't. Straight down. 15 second half points for Kellum. Into the lane. Brooks double clutches it up. No, got contact with Milos. And the foul will be called on Fradish and will send Derek Brooks to the free throw line. Brooks transferred in from Phoenix College last year and was voted Southland Conference Newcomer of the Year. He redshirted two years. This is not your mom's Southeast Missouri State University. Today, you'll do the work before you get the job. And when your tenacity is tested, your strengths are stretched, and your confidence secured, we'll help you find the place where you'll be extraordinary. At Southeast Missouri State, we're proud of where we've been, but we're focused on where we're going. And right now, we have opportunities you didn't even know existed. I think if, if he could stay out of foul trouble and be a, a guy that you could depend on to play 34 minutes a game, then I think the Red Hawks could be a lot better than people think they are. Red Hawks basketball is brought to you all season by the Cone family of dealerships in Cape Girardeau and Anna, Illinois. It's our family serving your family for over 50 years. You can visit them online, check out their inventory at visit code. Dot or drivecode.com. That is C O A D, drivecode.com. The Code family of dealerships supporting Red Hawks basketball. To the free throw line, Derek Brooks, the Southland Conference newcomer of the year a season ago, knocks it down. He won the JUCO National Championship, the Division II Junior College National Championship, while playing at Phoenix College in high school. He was the East Valley Player of the Year at Desert Ridge High School. He's out of Portland, Oregon. And had a brother that uh, played football at Kansas for the Jayhawks. And a ball deflected by Unruh and stolen by Camba. The lead is 25 with 834 remaining. The freshman parlay out of the free throw line. Jumps it out wide left for Brooks. Cross court pass deflected. Picked up by Widenauer. And now Parnell out high. A nice punch pass from Camber to Brooks, and his three is long. But the long rebound to Parnell. Now Unruh tries one and buries it. That's Widenauer that knocked down the three. Aaron Widenauer with the three-point basket. All four of his field goals now this season have all been three-pointers. And we're going to get a foul coming up on Unruh. Two on Unruh. And three was not wide an hour, by the way. It was Unruh. Un Unruh, yeah. yes. Unruh with the three pointer rather than well, wide an hour. Wide an hour's got 23, and uh, Unruh's got 25, so. We're under the eight minute mark. Simmons, his three pointer from the right sideline won't go. Wide an hour. 
got that rebound. Now Parnell in transition. Works around a canvas screen. Jumps it out left. Open three for Brooks. Too strong. Ball deflected. Picked up by Camba. He finishes in traffic and got the foul. Good hard work inside by Matthew Camba. And he does not spell his first name Matthew the traditional way. M-A-T-H-I-E-U. It's like... Court-appointed special advocates, or CASA volunteers, speak for children who are navigating the court system. CASA volunteers have one focus, to serve the best interests of the child who is facing neglect, abuse, foster care, or adoption. Last year in our area, over 1,000 children who could have used a CASA volunteer did not have one. You can make a difference. You can help. You can be a voice for a child. Volunteer. Donate. Participate. Call 1-855-7-VOICES. Stay tuned after the game. We will have our player of the game. Powered by Golf Etc. Golf Etc. We fit your game at 1720 Kingsway Drive in Cape. You can call them at 339 Golf. Golf Etc. bringing us the player of the game during the postgame show. Want to thank everybody involved in the OVC Digital Network crew tonight. The executive producer, Anthony Shear. Stephanie Sawyer and Jordan Wyatt, the sports producers. Cameron Ellington is directing tonight. Jordan Burks, the technical director. Alicia Travis on replay. Stephanie Sawyer on graphics. And on the cameras tonight, Anthony Shear, Jordan Wyatt, Matt Mormon, and Andrew Moore. Great job. Great team. Nicely done tonight, everybody, on our OVC Digital Network crew. Camba can't hit the free throw. Red Hawks come down offensively, up 20. Open three in the right corner. Cashing in is Calvin. His second tray tonight. The lead is 23, 73-50. We've got 7.20 to play on the second half clock. Camba back to the basket. The turnaround over Calvin won't go. Tipped by Brooks, fails to fall. It's on the floor, picked up by Derek Brooks. A bounce pass deflected, stolen by Trey Kellum. Red Hawks get out on the move. Jamal Calvin shovels it at the top of the circle to Denzel Mahoney. Back to Calvin, unloads a triple. That came off the front of the rim, and Mahoney is fighting with Camba for the loose ball. They whistle a held ball, and a possession arrow pointing for the Red Hawks. It'll stay down on this end to our left. 6.57 to play. 73.50. The Red Hawks up by 23. Tennessee Tech is getting pounded at Lipscomb tonight. How about that? Lipscomb 2 and. A two and six team, Tech is two and five. But Lipscomb leads Tennessee Tech five minutes into the second half by 30, 70 to 40. Lipscomb, big game for the Bison. Little jab step on the left arc by Jalen Benton. Gives it to the all-conference player. Antonius Cleveland, Benton, swing it left. Mahoney touches it wide left to Calvin. One hands it to Cleveland, touch it inside, and the hook shot won't go for Trey Kellum. Swooping in for the rebound is Widenauer. He will bring it up the center of the floor. Angles right on the wing. Hands it off for Ethan Lee, who has checked in, the junior from Camden, Arkansas. Now Derek Brooks finds the freshman Parnell. 14 to shoot, a three by Unruh is an air ball. Into the hands of Cleveland. Long pass down court, deflected by Parnell and stolen by Unruh. Ball fake by Widenauer against Mahoney. Gives it up to Unruh, drives the right baseline. A kick into the left corner, stepping to 12 on the left baseline, but missing the shot is Brooks. Snapping down the rebound is Denzel Mahoney, who got it away to Calvin, and he runs the floor. Now with a U-turn, he'll stop at the center jump circle and run some clock here. We're under the six-minute mark. Shot clock at 18. Red Hawks have a 23-point lead, 73-50. A 36 to 1 run to start the second half. Wheeling and finishing off the left baseline. Off the window is Trey Kellum. And Eric, that was the ninth assist for Calvin. 
chance for a double double tonight for Jamal Calvin if he can get to well, he's only got three points though that may hamper him Jesse I don't think he's gonna get there as far as points go and that's 21 points now for Kellum so a great night for Trey now he's got a, a chance for a double double he's got seven rebounds he had 21 points against Texas Rio Grande Valley last year at their place his career high is 23, Jess, so he is only two points away from a career high, 75-50. And the freshman, Daraja Parnell, right back to the stripe. He is three for three from the line tonight. In the overtime loss to Little Rock, Parnell hit his only free throw attempt. He hit his only three-point attempt as well. He drills that one. He's a lefty from Andover, Kansas, just a freshman. In fact, he didn't miss a shot against Little Rock. Three for three from the field. Hit his only three-point attempt. Hit his only free throw against the Trojans. And he is now five for five from the line. That's 11 points for Parnell, and that's a career high. His career high was eight points against Little Rock and Oklahoma State. So he continues to improve every game. Daraja Parnell. He's going to be fun to watch for four years for the Bears fans. 75-52, dribble drive by Simmons. I think he dragged his pivot foot yeah. out to Edie. A three, yes! Taj Edie from way outside. I think Simmons got away with dragging that foot, Jess. Oh, no question. 78-52, Red Hawks will take it. They're up 26. Wide an hour. Works it out high. We haven't seen a lot of Jordan Howard in the second half. He's got it. Dribbles left down to the baseline. Gives it up to Parnell. Fall away three-pointer. Came up short. Rebounded by Kellum. Taj Edey, the freshman, gets out on the run. Daniel Simmons, a jump stop. Throws it back near center court. Ran down by Edey. And Edey lost the ball. Parnell picked his pocket. Throw it ahead to Jordan Howard for the layup. Went to the left hand for the finish. First basket in the second half for Jordan Howard. 78-54. 24-point lead. We're approaching four minutes to play here from the Show Me Center. Game that started at 6.30 tonight. And Trey Kellum had it raked away and ran down by Ethan Lee, whose dad played a little college ball at Southern Arkansas University. Ethan is from Camden University. He was an all-stater at Camden Fairview High School. Three ball, Weidenauer. Aaron Weidenauer, his fourth three-point basket of the season. In fact, all of his field goals as a collegiate player are from distance. So he looks like he's going to be a pretty good shooter for them. And uh, answering in the right corner is Daniel Simmons. And then he trips on his way back up the floor. He's going to get the business from his teammates after falling down. He might have tripped over the one of the coaches. <laughs> and going coast to coast, Jordan Howard. Getting to the basket and able to put it over the front of the cylinder and down. 81-59 and a timeout. Rick Ray wants to get Milos Vranish and William Chenga into the game. We've got a timeout on the floor. 3.13 to play in the game. 81-59. And Jess, our scoring summary, our man up with Massey scoring summary is powered by Hoyer Sons Implement Company, your locally owned and operated Full line dealer with extensive parts inventory. Man up with Massey and Hoyer Sons. A winning combination so far for the Red Hawks. Just the scoring summary started at halftime where the Red Hawks were down by seven. Remember, they gave up that late bat. to one was the run and you know what if I was Rick Ray if I, well if I was Rick Ray I'd do what Rick Ray's gonna do if Rick Ray was me and I gave the speech at halftime that I think he gave and I go in after this game you know what I'm gonna say one word see you know coaching is more than just 
sitting on the bench and, and telling who to go in and stuff like this. It's figuring out what went wrong in the first half and correcting it for the second half. The same with football or any other sport. You got to make adjustments as the game goes on. Now, that's not going to work every time. You're not going to go in there and give a big halftime speech and come out and the team perform just exactly the way you said in the halftime meeting. But I still say that Rick Ray has a lot to do with this second half play of the Red Hawks. Simmons jumps it on the right side. Eli Sample has checked in. Sample getting some playing time here. Ball is out of bounds. Eli, the senior from Crystal City. Transferred in from Southwest Baptist. Spent a couple of years at Three Rivers Community College. He never played for Coach Gene Brett Best. He also spent some time at Missouri. Southwest Baptist. Ajidi, another three. That's his third triple. Eli Sample is a senior, and the only game he's played in so far is Hannibal LaGrange, so getting some play time, and he just got the steal on a deflection. Sample. Red Hawks in transition. Daniel Simmons, a three goes in and out. Rebound, Edie, the putback. He got bumped. Not strong enough to finish, and they run the other way with Jordan Howard. Pull-up jumper is Jeff Lowry from 12. It wouldn't fall, and William Chenga. I like the way Chenga grabbed that rebound, don't you? Did you see him one-handed? Chenga still knocking the rust off. Remember, the NCAA wouldn't let him practice for three weeks. They need to see a sixth-grade transcripts from Africa. And a pass through the lane from Edie. It'll be picked off. It was intended for Simmons. Lowry had it knocked away from him. Jeff Lowry. And we mentioned earlier his brother Josh is an assistant right here at Central Arkansas. Remember, I said they were eight game, eight points under their average at halftime. The Red Hawks were the eight points over their average in the second half as they popped in 50, 54 points already. And the guy with five syllables in his last name has checked in. Otas E.A.K. Polar. E.A.K. Polar is the last name. Otas, the first name, from Edmonton, Canada. And there he is. E.A.K. Polar laying it in with a right hand. That's not so hard. E.A.K. Polar. That, I can handle that one. Five syllables. You, you just don't run across many five-syllable jobs. 84-61, 93 seconds to play in the game. Red Hawks would love to get Sample a basket. Here's Taj Edey, jumps it wide right for Chenga. Couple of dribbles, gets to the paint, and gets tied up. Possession will go over here to Central Arkansas. I need to get Eli Sample a basket, Jess, yeah, before we get out of here. Yeah, give him a shot, yes. Edey, and he was wide open at the top of the key there, but Edey took the ball inside and tried to get the pass away to Chenga. We'll see if Eli Sample can get a basket before this one's over with. 84-61. Baseline feed, and once again, spinning and finishing is E.A.K. Polar. Here comes Edie. Sample's got it. Shoot it, Eli. Dribbles left. Got it away to Daniel Simmons. Right back to Sample. He'll take the shot. Got it! There we go. Fans love it. Eli Sample burying one from downtown. And the Red Hawks get sampled in the scoring column. 87 63, a dribble drive by EAK Polar, but he can't finish at the rim. 39 seconds to play. And Vronish tries a triple. That won't go. Loose ball grabbed by the Red Hawks. Eli Sample will dribble it back out. There's a one second differential between game and shot clock, and Rick Ray says, hold no on. No shot. Just hold it. It'll be a shot clock violation. They'll have to release a shot or take the violation. And I think Rick Ray will take the violation. Uh, good for Rick. I like Superman that. Superman shirt on under the suit tonight. Superhero night. And it was some kind of a superhero run the Red Hawks went on. Raise your hand if you've ever seen a 36 to 1 run ever. The Red Hawks just had one tonight to start the second half. And the shot clock expires. 1.1 second left. Central Arkansas will inbound, and the Red Hawks are going to win this game going away thanks to that 36-1 to run. And there's a final. 
One of the most remarkable runs we've ever seen, Jazz, at any level of basketball. 36 to 1. They hold Central Arkansas after the Bears shot 59%. 59% from the floor in the first half. The Red Hawks held them to 0 for 12 to start the second half. They held them scoreless for almost 10 minutes to start the second half and completed the comeback. Yeah, they, they scored 26 points in the second half, Central Arkansas, but only one in the first 10 minutes. So the last 10 minutes, they scored 25, which is reasonable, reasonable for a, a half of a half, a 10 minute section there. But the Red Hawks came out just simply red hot and playing great defense. Yeah, defense is the name of the game, especially when you got as many new people as Red Hawks do. I, and there's no reason in the world, Eric, with the quickness and the speed of some of these new guys the Red Hawks have, they got a lot more talent than they had last year. I don't oh, care what anybody says. Absolutely. They can play for Change. 